activate interlocks, dino therms connected, infracells up, mega thrusters are go. Let's go Voltron Force. Coming up after this, I'll be talking about season two of Voltron Legendary Defender, only on Netflix. Stay tuned. Arg! <laughs> All right, so season two started out pretty good. It ended pretty good as well. Uh, there will be spoilers in this review, so those of you who don't want to know what's going on in the season just yet, go ahead and click off, come back after you've watched the uh, season, and uh, watch the video. Uh, so with that being said, the team is separated. Paige is on her own with some furry alien creatures, and then Keith is on one side of a planet, while Shiro's on another side of the planet and Keith's got to help, come help him. The lions are down, depowered for some reason. Uh, and Shiro's being attacked by what appears to be alien hellhounds. So Keith's got to hurry up and get to him in order to help him. Uh, so Keith does end up piloting the black lion right at the get-go, but it's very briefly. After be, being hinted at all season, uh, during season one... It is officially revealed that Zarkon was the original paladin for the Black Lion. Uh, and he apparently his connection with the Black Lion is so strong that if he gets close to the Black Lion, he can control it. So Voltron has to keep its distance from Zarkon until Shiro can develop an even stronger connection with the Lion. Uh, it is also revealed that King Alphor was the original uh, pa paladin of the Red Lion as well. Uh, it's also revealed that King Alphor built the Black Lion on what I can only assume would be Planet Doom. It's destroyed now, but it was Zarkon's home planet, which I believe uh, in the original series was Planet Doom. Uh, I can't remember what it is now. Uh, there is a Galra resistance against Zarkon. Basically, Rebel Galras, which is the species that Zarkon is, they don't want to be ruled by Zarkon. They want to be, you know, they want to be a part of this new galactic alliance that Princess Allura and the Voltron for Voltron Paladins, sorry, are forming. And they do actually start forming the Galactic Alliance, as portrayed in the original few series. Um, it is just a start. It's more of a resistance movement but they are forming this alliance with all these other planets. These rebel Galras actually have uh, people inside Zarkon's forces working against him in high-ranking positions, too. Uh, it's also shown that Voltron's sword can increase in size, as shown where Voltron has to cut through an entire massive ship, Galra ship, and uh, in order to do that, it has to increase in size in order to get it all in one swipe. So it, it goes from being like this, you know, to being about twice the length of Voltron. As I told you guys before, Zarkon has this incredibly strong connection with the Black Lion. So much so that he is able to track down the Voltron Paladins and Princess Allura and uh, the castle and everything by mental, psychically, by the psychic link between him and the Black Lion. It, it was briefly shown in season one that the lions can evolve, but it was more so shown in this season. The Black Lion is capable of so much more power. He gets, uh, when he and Shiro are able to uh, bond, create a super strong bond, you know, what, in the original series, that one little computer thing came up and, you know, Keith did the activate interlocks and, you know, did, did the switches and everything. Well, that thing comes up and he does the same thing, but he doesn't do the whole activate interlocks, dinotherms connected thing. He just, you know, immediately tur uh, turns it on and everything. Power boost. The black line gets these, uh, these enhanced wings that almost look like mechanical feathers coming off of it. And when they do that during, uh, when it's formed, forms Voltron, they actually are able to create a version of the blazing sword. 
before we've only ever seen the sword itself, not blazing power or anything like that. Once all five lions or once all five paladins are able to create superior bond with their lions, they're able to form the actual blazing version of the sword and uh, end up destroying Zarkon. Uh, it's left unclear if Zarkon actually gets destroyed at the end or if he is just severely injured and left in a comatose. I'm not sure it, that part wasn't really specific. Shiro did tell Keith that if anything happens to him, he wants Keith to lead the team, which Keith takes very reluctantly. It's also revealed, it was kind of hinted at in season one, uh, but Shiro and Keith aren't actually brothers. Uh, Keith was an orphan and I guess he was kind of adopted by uh, Shiro's family or whatever. But apparently Keith is part Galra on his mother's side. It's not really specified how much Galra blood he has in him. Uh, I know in Voltron Force it was revealed that he was the same species as Allura. But in this version he's part Galra which is the same species as Zarkon. His father was human. Uh, his mother, it's not really specific on how much uh, Galra blood she had in her. If she was just half Galra, full Galra, whatever. But this really creates a... Um, it upsets the dynamic between Allura and Keith. Because Allura is so prejudiced against all Galras because they wiped out her race. So it, it really creates this uh, tension in the group. And before that's revealed though... It's kind of hinted at that Allura is actually in love with Keith. Keith kind of feels the same about her, but it's it's only hinted at. It's not really bluntly stated, you know. Towards the end of the uh, season, towards the end of the uh, season, it's revealed that Zarkon has this armor. It makes him about the size of Voltron. And the Voltron paladins have an extremely hard time fighting him. He, he gets super powered by Hagar and her, uh, her druids. And then while he's fighting the Voltron Paladins, then Hagar and her druids are creating this super powerful blast to destroy ca uh, the Castle of Lions. So it, it's very, it's kind of an epic battle. Almost uh, a little bit more epic than Fleet of Doom. It's also revealed. Hagar's not Galra. Uh, it's actually revealed that Hagar's an Altaian which is the same species as Allura and Koran. It's not exactly specified why she turned against her own race or whatever, but Allura does eventually defeat Hagar hand-to-hand, -hand, causes her to retreat, and at the end of the season, Shiro goes missing, which strongly hints that Keith will take up the position of the leader of the Voltron Paladins and the Black Lion. How they're going to work that is... High, I'm not really sure about considering... The lions have to bond with their paladins. So they didn't really quite make that clear. And since all five members of the Voltron Force, or excuse me, I keep saying Voltron Force because that's what they've been called up until the Legendary Defender series, all five members of the, or all five paladins have bonded completely with their lions. I'm not really sure how they're going to be able, how they're going to switch lions up like that. Uh, in the original series and all the way up until uh, Vol up through Voltron Force, it was, Keith was the Black Lion. Uh, Sven was the original pilot of the Blue Lion, and then it became Princess Allura. Uh, Lance was the original uh, was the pilot of the Red Lion, and then Hunk, Yellow Lion, and Pitch Green Lion. Well, they kind of uh, changed that up this time made Shira, which was actually Sven. They just kind of changed his name to more fit the Go Lion version. They made uh, Shira the pilot of the Black Lion, Keith the pilot of the Red Lion, Lance the pilot of the Blue Lion, and then Hunk and Pidge kept their lions. I'm not really sure how they're going to work that. I was, there were a few scenes in the series towards the end that made me think that it actually gave me a little bit of hope that they were going to go the route of the uh, first of uh, the first three series: Voltron, uh, Le uh, Defender of the Universe, uh, Third Dimension, and uh, Voltron Force. 
where you know it does the activate interlocks, dynotherms connected, intracells up, mega thrusters are go, and uh, form feet and legs, form arms and torso, and all form the head. It, it really kind of hinted that they were going to do that at some point during the series, but they don't, which is a little upsetting because I really miss that's one of the things that made Voltron iconic was the music and the dynamic, the whole sequence they go through before when they form Voltron. It's very memorable. It, it sticks in mind. Now it just, let's form Voltron, and then they all combine together, and I don't know if I like that too much. I understand why they did it, because they need to be able to do it faster, but they could have done it in a similar way that they did with Voltron Force. Overall, I like the se uh, Season 2. I like the series on a whole. I just wish they would incorporate more elements of the original series. I wish they would turn the Blazing Sword back into the original version of the Blazing Sword. Because that's an iconic looking sword. I really wish they'd go back to the you know, form Voltron formation sequence that they used to do. Uh, and bring back the music. Everything else, you know, I don't mind too much. I don't mind that the, the Paladins of the Lions are switched around and everything. Just a few of those nitpicks that, as a fan from way back in the 80s, I grew up with Voltron. I want to be able to see stuff that I recognize. And this new version of Voltron, you know, they took away the original chest plate and the Voltron cross, which I understand why they took away the cross. I don't want to offend anybody or whatever. But that was still kind of an iconic look for Voltron. And they turned the chest plate blue instead of the original red. And the multicolors or whatever on the emblem. They could have changed up the chest emblem a little bit and kept the whole, the entire uh, red chest part though. Um, so I'm not really quite sure why they turned it into a blue V. Like I said, overall I liked it. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, the toys are out at Walmart and Target now. I got the legendary Black Lion, and I got my son the small six-inch Black Lion action figure as well. Here soon, we'll probably be getting the other lions so that I can form Voltron. But yeah, that was my Season 2 Voltron Legendary Defender review. Uh, I will try and do a review on this every season, and hopefully we'll get a little bit better with the Voltron Legendary Defender. The only thing I don't like is that they only release it once a year. They release an entire season at the beginning of the year. So you've got to wait all year long to catch the next season. So that that's the only thing I... That's one of the things I don't really like about the way Netflix does their shows. I wish they'd kind of do it like they release the first part of a season and then like six months later they release, they release the second part of the season. And then that way every six months, at least, we'd be able to get 10 to 13 episodes to be able to watch. Instead, we get 10 episodes, then have to wait a year to be able to watch 10 or 13 more episodes. I'll, I'll rank it about an 8 out of 10. As a Voltron fan, I liked it. The, I, had some, I have some nitpicks, but they're minor. So, hope you enjoy it, guys, and uh, come back for more Come Again. There was one thing I forgot to mention, guys. At the very last scene of the or of the season of the show, Hagar reveals that in this Voltron universe, Prince Lotor does exist. When she, after Shiro goes missing, Hagar goes to the body of uh, Zarkon. It's not really revealed if he, you know, like I said before, it's not really revealed if he's dead or if he's just in a coma or severely injured or whatever. But she orders her troops to summon. Prince Lotor. So that that's going to be pretty cool. I'd like this. I really want to see how they do Lotor next season. Lotor has been kind of the constant throughout all the different incarnations of Voltron. Voltron, the defender of the universe. You know, the main villains were Zarkon and Lotor, with a few uh, generals or command sub commanders or whatever. And then in Voltron, the third dimension, Lotor was the main baddie. Same with uh, Voltron, uh, Voltron Force. He was the main baddie. Voltron Fleet of Doom, which also ha which had both the Lion Force Voltron and the Vehicle Force Voltron. Zarkon was the main villain, I believe. It's been a while since I've watched it. 
But Lotor ended up being the main villain. He kind of turned on his father and uh, teamed up with the Vol two Voltron forces and Allura, specifically Allura, to help him. And then he kind of turned on them towards the end. I'll have to go back and rewatch it. But so that that's going to be pretty cool. I'd like this. I really want to see how they do Lotor next season. If you like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like, comment below, and share with your friends. <laughs> I hate you.